of day dawn into the mind The sun has come up, the night is behind Go down in the city, into the street And let's give the message to the people we meet So light up the fire and let the flame burn Open the door, let Jesus return Take seeds of his spirit, let the fruit grow Tell the people of Jesus, let his love show Go through the park or into the town The sun will come low, it never goes down The light of the world is risen again The people of darkness are needing our friend So light up the fire and let the flame burn Open the door, let Jesus return Take seeds of his spirit, let the fruit grow Tell the people of Jesus, let his love show A very warm welcome to our service this morning Our guest speaker today is the Reverend Duncan Dormer General Sec Secretary of USPG That's United Society Partners in the Gospel This is the Anglican Mission Agency that partners churches and communities worldwide and it's also one of the missions and charities which we support at St Michael's. It's, often, it's an opportunity to raise our eyes from our immediate surroundings and to think about how some of our Christian brothers and sisters elsewhere in the world are reaching out and serving their neighbours with great steadfastness and courage. Many thanks also to Alex Scott for our readings today and to Phil Wagg for writing our intercessions and to Anne, Jeff and Keith for our music. We begin our worship today by saying together a prayer from Uruguay. Praise, Praise my, my soul, soul, our good, good Lord. Lord. Sing, Sing songs to his say. name, for, for he, he has, has brought, brought my life into fresh waters when I was thirsty. He has fed me with the bread of life when I was starving. He has sustained me along all my days and never has put me to shame. Praise my soul, our good Lord, for all his goodness. Amen. And now, Alex will read our Bible readings with a hymn in between, and then Duncan Dormer will preach. The first reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, and we are reading from verses 1 to 11. There is therefore no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit to set the mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life 
because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 13 and we're reading from verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Note verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word, of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. But as for that which was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty and in another thirty. 
May I speak in the name of our loving, generous God, who brings life in all its fullness. Amen. Warm greetings to you from the chapel here at USPG as we gather for worship and as we continue on this strange journey of living with this pandemic. In the midst of so many powerful experiences of loss and emotions of anxiety, fear, uncertainty, I suspect there is one part of people's lives that has thrived and benefited as a result of all the attention and the sun, our gardens and window boxes. Gardening may well have proved something of a spiritual refuge for many, for there's something uplifting, hopeful, regenerative in the nurture of plants and in watching seeds germinate and reach up, leaves unfurling a witness to something bigger than ourselves, the bounty of creation, the resilience of life itself, and a testament to the future of the fruit and flowers to come. Let me take you for a moment to another garden. It's in the grounds of a university, seven hours ahead of us in Manila, the capital of the Philippines. An example of self-sufficient gardening that puts food on the table. The gardeners, however, surprisingly for an urban environment, are indigenous people, the Lumad, evacuated from Mindanao, about a thousand kilometers to the south, pushed off their lands by the military and commercial mining interests. They have claimed sanctuary in universities and churches. Lockdown in the Philippines has not simply been difficult or inconvenient. Around 30,000 people have been thrown into overcrowded and infection-friendly jails. The pandemic has provided an excuse. Just last week, a new anti-terror law was introduced, effectively bringing in martial law. Opposed by the churches, it is highly likely to lead to an escalation in human rights abuses. Indigenous groups in particular, and those who stand in solidarity with them and provide support, notably the churches and their leaders, have been subject to attacks online and in the flesh, with threats and arrests against the backdrop of a new shoot to kill policy for those deemed to be breaking the rules on lockdown. Throughout, the churches have provided practical support with education, health, the provision of life's necessities. Through programs like the Abundant Life Program, which USPG has the privilege to be involved with supporting. And church leaders have stood up with extraordinary courage to the government and denounced the violence and abuse that indigenous groups and others have suffered. I have met with a number of priests and bishops from the churches and frankly, I'll be honest, their testimony and their commitment to standing in solidarity with the marginalized and the persecuted has sometimes brought me to tears. Our gospel reading gives us a very familiar parable, the sower and the seed. We know the story well, it's beloved of Sunday schools for obvious reasons. But beyond the crayon pictures, the parable speaks of a much more challenging context. The parables talk of a crisis, a situation of conflict. They point to a decision one way or another, it's wheat or tares, good soil or poor soil. This is echoed in our reading from Romans, where Paul speaks of two sharply contrasting worldviews, regimes or laws. That of death and sin in the flesh, a life focused on worldly power and greed, and that life lived with the freedom of the Spirit, lived towards God in the Spirit of Christ. That stark distinction is something that some Christians, like my Filipino friends, 
find very easy to understand. As indeed did Jesus, who had been denounced by the powers of the day, accused of being Beelzebub of the devil. But the kingdom of God is also a mystery difficult to grasp, and the parable rests on a beautiful confusion. For despite Jesus' explanation, again and again, people identify with the seeds and not the soil. They think instinctively of the soil as the place they have landed, their family, community, country, all the things that allow for people to flourish, to be healthy and wealthy and wise, reflecting good fortune for which we should be grateful. With all those things that frustrate, produce poverty, discrimination, even persecution, clearly speaking of bad or poor soil, not a place we want to land. And so we may feel pity or compassion for those in challenging and difficult circumstances. They are in a rocky place and could be picked off by powerful, greedy forces. And that makes sense. The indigenous groups in the Philippines, for example, are being pushed off their ancestral lands that have always nurtured and sustained them. They find themselves pushed to the margins, to the edges of the land, the stony places, or hemmed in to urban places. But this is not what Jesus is saying. He flips our natural thinking. We are the soil. We receive the gospel, the transforming seed of life. We are either the path, the rocky place, or the thorns, or we are the rich, dark soil, a place above all that receives, a place of depth and generosity, a place for bearing the word and allowing it to take root and to be fed by who we are. And just like the breaking down of organic material releases nutrients that feed the roots of our plants, so too a dying to self, to the ego, involves a breaking down, a breaking open, a vulnerability, and a release of gifts in the service of the gospel. We're not called to be hard surfaces, self-sufficient, unyielding, focused on our own identity and security, but to be vulnerable, open to transformation and growth towards an unknown future that God intends for us. There is a danger that we look upon our sisters and brothers in more challenging circumstances, either with pity, I just can't imagine it, thank goodness I'm here, or perhaps with an admiration which idolizes their courage, I'm not sure I would be that courageous. Our sisters and brothers of the churches in the Philippines are, however, like us. First and foremost, receivers and bearers of God's transforming grace. Their actions are not in their own strength, but deeply rooted in prayer and worship, a deeply joyful worship. They seek to be agents of the kingdom, and in that, sorrow and joy go hand in hand. If it is a rich soil infused with resilience and courage, a soil that produces the rich fruits of hospitality, of solidarity, of compassion and friendship, then it is so because it is fed by a Christian life firmly anchored in worship and an openness to God. Of course, they and many others deserve our support in prayer and solidarity, and even where possible, our financial support, for we are one in Christ. For we are all having to learn afresh what it means to be church, even what it means 
to come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. We are all having to dig deep into ourselves as we come to terms with our losses, to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be church to our local community? As we do so, we should be encouraged by the examples of resilience, faithfulness, and courage from across the world. Local and global mission go together. And the only limits to prayer and solidarity, the only limits to the transforming word taking root, the only limits to new shoots and fruit lie within, in our own hearts, in our capacity to give that nurturing space openly and freely to the Spirit of God to work within. Amen. I found that sermon from Duncan deeply challenging. I found myself asking myself, am I or are we rich soil infused with a resilience and courage, a soil that produces the rich fruits of hospitality, of solidarity, of compassion and friendship? Am I, are we? fed by a Christian life firmly anchored in worship and an openness to God. So we come now to our time of confession. The response to Lord be merciful is forgive us our sin. Lord be merciful. Forgive, forgive us, us our, sin. our sin. Lord God, our Maker and Redeemer. This is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as forgiven people, let us praise God as we join Jeff and Keith in singing I am a new creation. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God I stand. Here in the grace of God I stand. 
And now we pray in the words that Phil has written for us. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray together to the Father, yet separately. Loving Father, we have faced dark days and uncertainty, yet we put our trust in you and know that light will reveal itself through our faith. During these uncertain times, we still see the positives, the birds and nature as a whole in its glory, things which in the past we have tended to overlook in the rush of everyday life. The ability to walk in solitude and think about the wonder of your creation and caring for one another. We thank you for your precious gifts and for the moments we may now share with loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We hear and understand the message given to us by your Son, our Saviour, in the parable of the sower. We pray that we may be counted amongst those whose seed falls on fertile ground, and thus make use of the talents you have given us to the benefit of those around us, both near and far, to give and not to count the cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labour and not to ask for any reward except to know we do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, at this time of uncertainty, as we continue to face restrictions through the threat of COVID-19, yet now cautiously venture into the new territory, we give thanks to all who have been called to care for the sick and for scientists seeking an effective vaccine. We continue to pray for all who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. Bless our doctors, nurses and all essential workers who give of their time, skill and patience for the relief of all who suffer, knowing that in ministering to others they serve you also. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for the welfare of our children whose education has been interrupted over past months. Guide them in the difficulties which beset them in their current surroundings. Keep alive in their hearts the love of all that is good in their home life and an insight to appreciate all that is set before them for their future, and above all, to search out and do what is pleasing to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now, loving Father, fountain of all hope, grant us the confidence and expectation of your promises, knowing that the trials and hindrances of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory you will reveal to us in due course, having run the race, completed the course, and kept the faith. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'd like to reflect some more about issues facing the indigenous people of the Philippines, there's a link at the end of this service to a short prayerful meditation on YouTube. And now our blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Amen. From the highest of heights to the depths.
depths of the sea Creation's revealing your majesty From the colours of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable You see the depths of our hearts and you love us the same. 